hey there, reader friends. I'm Erica, and things have changed. <laughs> sorry that I have been completely kind of off the YouTube booktube grid for the last pretty much two months, but it has been a crazy two months for me outside of booktube. I moved to a new apartment. I am in love with my new apartment, although I feel like I'm not an official booktuber anymore since I'm not going to be filming in front of bookshelves. I have bookshelves. I'll put a picture over here somewhere of my books on my new bookshelves, but the lighting where my bookshelf is is pretty atrocious. So I'm not going to be filming in front of my bookshelves, at least not right now. It's also been pretty crazy in my life because if you know anything about public libraries and anything about youth librarians, you know that summer reading is a thing. If youth librarians had a motto, Game of Thrones style, it would be summer reading is coming. So not only have I been in the midst of summer reading planning, I also had two major other projects at work that I was involved in and the result of that meant that my time off was spent preparing to move or reading or sleeping and trying not to just scream in in exhaustion. One of the reasons I decided to come back right now is because everybody that is awesome is doing this new readathon that I need to be part of which is called Sabathon and I saw it being posted and I was like oh, I need to do this readathon because I love reading books that make me cry and have feelings and emotions. I really enjoy reading as like a cathartic experience. So when I saw Michaela and Samantha post their announcement videos for this, and then I went and watched all the other host announcement videos, I was like, yes, yes, please let me be, let me, yes, yes. yes. Sabathon is a new readathon that's being hosted by Michaela at my book self, Rocky at Blonde with a Book, Chrissy at the September issue, Samantha at Samantha Reading, Becca at Becca and the books and Katie at Beasley who are all amazing ladies you should go subscribe I will leave links to all their channels down below this readathon celebrates all the reading that makes you cry basically for good reasons like because of happiness and warm fuzzy feelings particularly when your ships sail and for sad reasons like when authors decide to torture your beloved characters for no reason other than to also then torture you by extension we're celebrating it all in Sabathon. We're celebrating it all. Sabathon is going to start on Monday, May 21st and run until Sunday, May 27th. And I have to tell you, I was very, very, very excited when the dates were released because it is over the Memorial Day weekend holiday, which in the U.S. Memorial Day is Monday the 28th. But because it's a holiday weekend, I have a long weekend off work. I'm going to be off on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. And I'm getting off early on Thursday as well. So I will have all kinds of time to be reading. Sabathon has five challenges and all of the hosts are very, 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 very adamant that you need to make the readathon work for you, which means if you want to combine challenges, that's a-okay. This readathon is pretty easy going. I mean, except for the fact that you will be tortured with all your emotions. But other than that, you'll have a great time. Challenge number one is to read a book you've been putting off because you know it will make you too emotional. I have lots of those books. Challenge number two is to read a book that will make you cry with happiness. Challenge number three is to reread a book that destroyed your emotions, which I just realized that I forgot to pull it off the bookshelf. I'll go get it in a second. Challenge number four is to read a book under 300 pages. And challenge number five is to read the group book. And I gotta go get a book that I forgot to pull off the bookshelf because clearly it's been so long that I, since I've done this, I don't even remember how to pull books properly even though technically that's my, like, you know, profession, pulling books. Oh well. I really hope I'm in the same spot, guys. It just kind of went from, who knows, who knows. So I have, like, four and a half books for this readathon, which sounds confusing, but it isn't confusing. I'm gonna explain it. When I first saw the challenges for this readathon, the first book that came to mind for me that has been on my TBR forever that I need to read and that I know will give me all kinds of feelings and make me just an emotional mess is Crooked Kingdom by Leigh Bardugo. I just haven't gotten to it. And I think it's because I know I was spoiled on something major that happens in this book. And because of it, I was immediately like, I don't want to read this because I know something's happening that I don't want to happen. And it's going to wreck me. It's going to wreck me to pieces. But I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. But here's the thing. Because I want to read Crooked Kingdom, I need to remember what actually happened in Six of Crows. And I don't. I remember the basics. 
I remember the characters. I remember what ships are with which characters. But I don't remember a lot of the specifics. I don't remember a lot of definitely the B plot lines. And I don't want to start Perfect Kingdom and be completely lost and trying to remember what had happened. So I'm actually going to reread Six of Crows. But because I have other books and both of these books are pretty hefty books, I'm not going to try and read them all during the readathon proper. I'm going to start Six of Crows either tonight or tomorrow and reread it real quick, maybe even skim, but get a feel for what happened and refresh my memory so that when I start Crooked Kingdom, you know, my emotional frustrations will not be because I have no idea what's going on. Those two books, those one and a half books, however you want to count it, are going to fulfill the challenge of read a book you've been putting off because you know it will make you too emotional, and reread a book that destroyed your emotions. Now, if we want to be nitpicky and say, no, Six of Crows is not going to count because you're not actually reading it only during the readathon, I have another book that I would really like to reread that definitely destroyed my emotions, perhaps even more than Six of Crows, perhaps even more. I really want to reread Codename Verity by Elizabeth Ween. For those of you who don't know, Codename Verity is a World War II historical fiction novel, and it follows basically Verity, who is a spy who has been caught by the Germans. And this is her testament and her kind of story and her telling her story before she's executed. And I'm not going to say any more because of spoilers. It's a great first like, if you're not a historical fiction type reader, I think Elizabeth Ween is very approachable and maybe you could give it a try. Maybe you could give it a try? Oh, another thing I completely forgot to mention. You can read Codename Verity with a queer lens. And it makes me happy. It also destroys me. And I don't care if Elizabeth Ween didn't intend it that way. I don't think she would care, honestly, if people want to read it queer. But um, it, it's just beautiful to me to read it that way. Just read it, guys. If this becomes my legacy book, I wouldn't be mad. I wouldn't be mad. Also, can we just take a quick second to say that Erica loves a book that has no romance really in it whatsoever unless you read it through the queer lens and kind of put it upon the characters. Like, there's not actually a romantic plot line in this. I don't know what's happening. Am I still Erica E. Reads? I don't know. Challenge number four was to read a book under 300 pages. And your girl here struggles to read books under 300 pages. I, I just, I was looking and all the books I thought of were like way over 300 pages or we're like 304. And since I'm already kind of cheating on one regard, I thought I wouldn't push it. However, I have this book that I checked out from the library that I've been so excited to read that comes in at 298 pages. And that is The Elephant Chaser's Daughter by Shilpa Raj. This book is a memoir that follows Shilpa throughout her education. And then I think it continues into her college years and post-college years. Maybe it stops then. I don't know. Shilpa attended the Shantabhavan School in India, which is a radical education initiative that's goal is to educate members of the untouchable caste in India and to provide them with the means to, first of all, pull themselves out of systemic generational poverty, but also then go back into their communities and affect positive change and kind of try and create social momentum so that people can move out of the untouchable ca caste and become more financially able to do things and just more financially stable and not in poverty. And I just thought, first of all, that that's an amazing goal. That's an amazing like thing to want to do to an entire group of people that have been systemically shut down and also the fact that they're doing it through education which I love because education is just the best. I just I'm such a nerd guys. I love school. I'm such a nerd. This book was brought to my attention because Shilpa was one of the women that was profiled in the Netflix documentary series Daughters of Destiny. So if you have Netflix and you're interested in this, I would highly recommend watching that documentary and seeing if you can get your hands on this book. So as I said earlier, this is going to fulfill my read a book under 300 pages challenge, but I think it also could fulfill the read a book that will make you cry with happiness challenge just because Shilpa is able to go to school and gain an education and hopefully go back into her community and affect positive change. And those things all are things that make me immensely happy and hopeful and also make me cry. I guess on a side note, I could say that I think that all these books do make me at times cry from happiness because there are moments where it's like I'm just completely touched. And 
I don't know, crying from happiness is not really something I think I do that much. I think when I'm happy, I tend to laugh more. I tear up. I don't know. Maybe I just never am happy. Maybe I'm just a dark, twisted soul and I don't understand happiness. And the final challenge, the fifth challenge for Sabathon, is to read the group book, which is The Astonishing Color of After by Emily X. Pan. X. R. Pan. By Emily X. R. Pan. I have to confess that when I saw that this was the group book, I wasn't very excited. I'm not particularly interested in reading this book right now. I'm a little concerned, a little worried. As I said in my previous video, I have been in the process of going to therapy and addressing some own mental health difficulties and challenges I'm facing right now in my life. And I honestly don't know if this book is going to be one that um, puts me in a safe place reading wise because it does deal with suicide and with the aftermath of suicide. Disclaimer guys, I'm safe, okay? I'm getting treatment. It's okay. I'm not suicidal. I'm not any of that. But like the fact that mental health is a topic in this book and it from what I've heard it's dealt with really well but I also am like I'm dealing with my own mental health stuff and I don't want to read about that necessarily right now. Basically long story short I'm gonna try it because the people that have been talking about it on booktube and the people that have read it have said it's amazing and really beautiful and well written heartbreaking but also it, it's a good good important book to read. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a try but I'm also gonna reserve myself the the right to say nope not at this time not at this time and I don't know host do you think that I can still count myself as achieving through the readathon and meeting all the challenges just by starting it? I hope so. Hopefully it's gonna be fine. We'll just see what happens. So that's it. Those are the five books that I hope to read well, four and a half slash five that I hope to read for Sabathon. If you're doing Sabathon as well, please let me know if you have any TBR videos. You can feel free to link them down below so I can check them out. Thank you so much to all the hosts for creating this readathon because I am very excited for it. And if you have anything else you'd like to say, any comments, feel free to leave them down below. Subscribe if you'd like, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Does any... <laughs> It's been so long that like also I don't know how the sound is gonna work in here. I really hope it's not echoey. It doesn't sound echoey. But new spaces, I have no control right now.